Hello everybody, Big Baby Three here. Today I'm going to show you how to solve a 4x4 super cube. So before we begin, first of all I am sick, which is why my voice sounds kind of weird. And second of all, this is going to be an advanced tutorial, and so you should be a fairly advanced cuber to do this. Otherwise you probably won't understand some of it. So before you learn how to solve this puzzle, uh, you'll of course need to know how to solve a 4x4 and a 3x3 super cube. And if you don't have one of these, you can simply use your 4x4 super cube as one. And if you don't have one of these, you can use your 4x4 super cube as one of these, only just without the orientation. So, once you know both of these, it's time to get started. So this is basically the same uh, method of solving as a normal 4x4. The only thing is, uh, the centers are a little bit different. And you'll do the 3x3 stage just like a normal 3x3 super cube. So you see, if we wanted to put these two white pieces together, uh, we actually couldn't because the arrows wouldn't line up. Because if you, you could move it down to here, but it would be rotating it because of the way that the piece works. It cannot just rotate and slide down. It actually rotates like that. And so, you see, if we would do that, they would be facing in different directions. However, if you had these two arrows that are facing opposite directions when they're diagonal, if you do some moves, you can actually get them to line up. So what you're going to do first is, on the first step, of course, you're making the centers. If you find two white pieces like that, that can line up. And then, obviously, the other two white pieces can line up, too. And once you've found those pieces, you're just going to line them up like normal. And you'll either have them correct like this or incorrect like this. But if they're facing towards each other, there's an easy fix. So that quick easy fix is just move them away from each other and then turn each of them just like that, and then they'll be lined up. So basically, you're just changing them from right here to right here. Just like that. And now, obviously, you can just line them up, and then we'll look in this middle layer along here for the yellow pieces. See, these are going the wrong direction, so we can do the same thing and line them up. Put them on the top layer. Again, this is all like normal. Uh, I line these two up, and you see it's lined up just like that. And you can actually avoid misaligning them like that by just looking at which direction they'll be facing when they're next to each other. So just put it in just like that. And now we'll just do the same thing all the way up into the last two centers. So you see those two and those two. Put them together. Then green goes here. So, yep, yeah, those are the right pieces. And these two go together. Put it in. And now we just have the last two centers. So instead of putting both of them in at once, we're just going to try and put one of them in. So what I like to look for is a 1x2 bar that has them already facing in the correct directions. So these two. And if you don't have them, like say something like... So say something like this, like there's none that are lined up. You can simply make one. So it can be like, I want this piece and this piece to go together. So we can rotate so they're facing the right directions and put them just like that. So this is what where the orange center is going to need to go. This is our already made 1x2 bar. And so now we can just put the other one in. But before, you see, the way that we're going to put it in is we're actually going to bring the other piece down next to it and then bring that up and that. But before we do that, because you see it'll be facing the wrong direction. So we need to bring this piece up to here and this piece up to here, I guess. And so this is just like we did earlier, except it's a little bit more confusing because this piece cannot be simply turned like that. So what you actually have to do is bring it up, turn it like that, and bring it back down. And make sure when you're bringing it up, you don't bring this other piece back down with it because you don't want to do that. So make sure it's up there or somewhere else, and then you bring it in. And now you can simply line these two pieces up, and you see this piece will be facing the opposite of the one that you've already made. Put them together, and then line these up so they'll be together and it'll be just like that. And now you'll see most likely on the last center there will be two pieces that are facing the wrong directions. it will be these two. And so what we're going to do is just put this in the front. It doesn't matter which orientation it is. And now we're going to learn a quick commutator. So this is just an algorithm that switches a couple pieces around. So we'll grab the 4x4 real quick. This is missing a piece because I broke it. But basically what this is, is if we grab normal 3x3 it's the beginner's method algorithm for just doing this. And it switches around these three pieces. So that's just the beginner's method. 
from the 4x4 here, we're actually going to do the same algorithm, only, well, we'll start off with a move like that, just normal. But then the right and left moves are just the inner slice. So, that, that, and that. And what that does, it actually switches this piece, this piece, and this piece. So it just cycles them around. So you see if we do that one more time, this red piece has moved over one more. And one more time, it'll go back to being solved. So what we can do in this one is you could just do it intuitively, but I've already come up with an algorithm for you. Uh, what you'll do is hold it in the front with the two pieces that need to be just uh, replaced by each other, switched around uh, on the right. And you do that algorithm once. And then you do an F move. Then you do that algorithm again. And it will be fixed. So there we go. Now we can move on to edge pairing, which is just normal. So there we go. And now the rest of it is just like a super cute 3 by 3 So we'll just do that like normal. So I can see I line those up, and those up. So you see, once we get to the last layer, we have a little bit of a problem. So this is just parity, so you may just go on like normal. Thinking that's just normal to do. Uh, but the thing is, the parity algorithm, it actually rotates these two centers by 90 degrees, which is a problem for us. But the thing that we can do is just do the parity algorithm and then fix that later. So, if you don't know this parity algorithm, you probably want to use this one because it's the best for this. So you see this uh, center is rotated, so I'm just going to resolve that layer. You can also just do an algorithm to do it, but this is almost as fast either way. Oops, I'm doing this wrong. So then just continue solving it until you make it to the edge slash corner parity, which I do have. And so again, you're not going to want to use the normal parity algorithm, well I did on the other one, but you're not going to want to use this one because it actually messes up the pieces inside of the centers, which is a big problem for us. Uh, so there's another simple parity algorithm, and it basically goes like this. Little r2, u2, little r, u2, little r2, u2, little r2, u2, little r, u2, little r2, u2. Just like that. And you see that will completely solve it, unaffecting any of the centers. And then of course you may get this piece rotated 180 degrees, I didn't, uh, but you just handle that just like a normal cube. And if you have just one center rotated 90 degrees, first of all check that you've finished all the centers correctly, and check that the pieces inside are lining up correctly, because you most likely made a mistake while you were pairing up the centers, or you assembled it wrong, because this does require assembly in the solve state and thus it'll be unsolvable. So that's basically it for this quick tutorial. If you didn't understand anything, uh, leave a comment in the comment below and I will see you guys next time. Bye!